Hello and welcome to the News 10 Times, Shireen Bhan. India is close to starting free trade negotiations with the Gulf Cooperation Council. Earlier this week, UAE's Foreign Minister met India's External Affairs Minister S. Jai Shankar to deepen the relationship between the two countries. India and the UAE are expected to surpass bilateral trade worth $88 billion this year. That's as per reports. In fact, UAE is India's third largest trading partner after the US and China. And for the first time, the UAE has signed a comprehensive economic partnership agreement with India, which was inked in February. The aim is to increase bilateral goods trade to over $100 billion in the next five years. UAE is also a member of the G20, for which India has assumed the presidency today. And the next climate summit, COP28, will be held in the UAE. Joining me now to talk about all of this and more is Dr. Abdul Nasir Al Shali, UAE's ambassador to India. Ambassador Al Shali, many thanks for joining us here on CNBC TV 18 and appreciate the fact that you have chosen to speak with CNBC TV 18 in your first broadcast interview uh, after taking over as UAE's ambassador to India. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Ambassador, let me start by talking to you about the progress that has been made post the inking of the SEPA. The five-year target is $115 billion in bilateral trade. Reports seem to suggest that we could well be on course of uh, uh, anywhere between 88 to $90 billion this year. If you can give us a status check and an update of what seems to be working on the ground as far as the SEPA is concerned and where we could be headed. Well, if that's the case, then uh, my job is done already. Uh, I believe the uh, correct target is 100 billion uh, US dollars in non-oil trade over the next five years. Uh, you were absolutely right. We are on track to achieving uh, quite a high number this year and next year in terms of uh, overall bilateral trade. But non-oil bilateral trade is to continue to grow over the next uh, five years. Uh, SEPA, as you mentioned, uh, is the framework that we are operating uh, within and is the uh, context uh, for the uh, economic and trade ties at the moment and moving forward. So what we're trying to do is to raise awareness about what SEPA offers in terms of benefits, how can not only uh, big investors benefit from it, but also SMEs, whether they choose to set up shop in India or to set up shop in the UAE. Uh, yes, uh, you know, you said you are on course uh, to achieve that $100 billion uh, dollar target uh, as far as uh, non-oil imports uh, trade is concerned. But Ambassador, let me talk to you about what's happening on crude at this point in time. We have seen crude prices come off and come off quite sharply uh, in light of what we have seen happening in China. Uh, prices have edged back a little higher. There is a crucial meeting on Sunday of the OPEC. Uh, the expectation is that perhaps it could be a status quo, there could be a rollover policy. What is your own outlook on where things currently stand as far as prices are concerned and what could the possible outcome be? Well, if we're looking at uh, food security and energy security, both files are important for the UAE and for India. Uh, starting with food security, uh, and as a country that imports the majority of its food from abroad, India is a reliable partner, and it has always been a reliable partner for the UAE, with special thanks for the Indian government and their role in doing so. Uh, and I'm not just talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, but I'm also talking about the 2008 global financial crisis and the years in between and the years before that. Now, when we talk about uh, food security for the UAE, obviously, as, an, uh, as a major importer of food from abroad, it is always important to make sure that uh, we have uh, excellent supply chains or at least supply chains uh, that are uh, resistant to what's happening in terms of uh, uh, whether it's a pandemic or any other crisis that uh, hits uh, various economies. At the same time, food security is an important uh, file for India because it creates livelihood, it uh, increases income uh, for farmers, and it also makes sure that uh, that food is uh, moving from one place to another, which means it can garner higher prices uh, being sold to markets uh, at market prices. Uh, in terms of energy, uh, energy is uh, also a very important file uh, for India, and the UAE as a reliable, responsible partner in the energy market is, uh, I would uh, like to say, a, uh, a very good uh, partner and will continue to be a very good partner for India in terms of uh, energy security. Now, in the wider context of energy markets, it's also our role to ensure that energy prices are stable uh, and whatever direction or whatever trend that uh, oil prices take, we just want to make sure that they don't oscillate uh, too much uh, into the 
uh, too much upwards in terms of pricing or, 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 or downwards. We want the energy market to be stable, to be predictable, uh, to as great of an extent as possible. Great of an extent as possible. Uh, yes, sir. Uh Yes, volatility uh, is not something that uh, anybody wants at this point in time, especially when we talk about uh, energy prices. Ambassador, uh, let me ask you about uh, uh, the talks that have started as far as an FTA with the GCC is concerned. In light of the SEPA inked between the UAE and India, uh, you know, what role do you believe the UAE can play in this larger GCC FTA with India? Well, having uh, a SEPA with India means that there is uh, some sort of a, a model that you can follow or a model that you can improve on and expand uh, to the entire GCC market. Uh, and the fact that we were able to do it in uh, such a short uh, period of time, in 88 days or so, uh, says a lot about the uh, relationship and the importance that both, both countries attach to SEPA. And I believe this importance will also... Um, be passed on to uh, the GCC market in terms of what SEPA means and what having a free trade agreement means uh, for the wider GCC market. Uh, talking about deepening relationships, especially as far as the energy uh, market is concerned, there are reports that suggest that perhaps uh, both sides, India and the UAE, are in talks for uh, an Indian consortium of public sector uh, energy companies to look at enhancing uh, their participation in oil blocks in the UAE. Uh, can you update us on where things currently stand, if in fact that is on the cards? The UAE is, uh, as I mentioned, sees energy security and food security as important files, just like India sees both files as important. And the reason I'm mentioning food security here as well is because the UAE is an investor in India's uh, food security, and it's only normal to see Indian companies and Indian investors as well interested in investing uh, in their energy security, whether they are doing it in their domestic market or in the UAE or in any other place that they find business opportunities in. Well, you know, speaking of food and energy security, uh, UAE is going to be hosting COP28. We've just come off, uh, 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 you know, the last big climate summit. What's the expectation now on taking the bait on forward? What is it that the UAE would like to achieve and like to address uh, when we talk about COP28? In COP28, we would like to build on what has been already achieved. India has done a lot in terms of committing to certain goals and to having uh, ambitious uh, targets. Uh, the Indian government is quite serious about it. Uh, they make that very clear, not only in uh, the COP forum, but also in other forums. And the UAE's role is to support India in achieving its goals, as well as uh, bridging the gaps that are existing at the moment and making sure that uh, we commit to uh, certain climate goals that would be beneficial for everyone. Uh, you know, speaking of COP28, today is also an important day as India has assumed the presidency of the G20. Uh, and, of course, this is going to be something that uh, will play itself out over the course of the year. The Prime Minister, of course, has said that India hopes to put new ideas on the table. Uh, what is it that, uh, that the UAE, that the world expects from the presidency that now India has assumed? Uh, as you would know already, the UAE is being invited now for the second time as a guest country and has been invited previously twice as the chair of the GCC. And the way we look at it is uh, we want uh, this kind of engagement to continue. We want to support the Indian presidency. We want to make sure that we are active, that we are participating in all of the working groups at the highest level. And that's a commitment that the UAE government has made to the Indian government and that it will see through uh, throughout the Indian presidency all the way to the Leaders' Summit in September 2023 that will take place in Delhi. Yes, sir, we are looking forward to that. But, Ambassador, you know, you touched upon food security, uh, and part of the relationship between India and the UAE is also the aspiration of deepening our engagement as far as uh, food corridors are concerned. Uh, could you update us on where things stand on that front, uh, and what is the aspiration uh, for the future? The UAE has invested in food security and in uh, food uh, warehousing and will continue to do so with India and will even seek other partnerships 
uh, whether they are in the Indian domestic market or elsewhere. Uh, our collaboration and our cooperation does not only, uh, is not only within the bilateral aspect of the relationship, but also extends to other forums, to other countries, wherever we see and seek uh, our mutual interest and uh, benefit. Food security is one aspect of it, but there are so many other aspects to it as well. So, you know, speaking of other aspects, Ambassador, and I'll end by asking you that, what would be the areas of priority where you would like a further acceleration of momentum to deepen the engagement between both sides? SIPA is the, is the top priority. And, you know, uh, every single time we sit in a meeting, uh, whether it is, you know, uh, at the highest level in government or whether I'm talking about, you know, any other level uh, at the working groups, uh, the question is always how can we uh, do more uh, and what is the way to achieving uh, more. And so um, starting from there, uh, I believe SEPA is the top priority because what SEPA can achieve and what we can do within the context of SEPA means that we can do so much more on uh, space, technology, we can do so much more on energy security, food security, we can expand investment and trade ties, uh, we can make sure that we uh, provide opportunities to SMEs in both countries, and we make sure that we can uh, take those SMEs to internationalize, we can focus on uh, trade, not in terms of volume, but in terms of value, which means that both countries uh, benefit from SEPA and any other SEPAs and free trade agreements that both countries uh, would sign in the future in terms of capturing uh, more and more of the value chain and making sure that uh, the UAE and India are enshrined in uh, the global uh, supply chain for uh, different goods and for different commodities. Ambassador Al Shali, we wish you the very best of luck uh, here in India and we appreciate you joining us here to take us through where things currently stand in the partnership and more importantly what the road ahead looks like. Appreciate your time. We are going to head into a short break, but up next, a special conversation with the global CEO of Body Shop, David Boynton. He's bullish on India as well. That and more when we return.